Maybe I've said enough about small groups. I can talk to the cows from home, except there's no cows in my garden. Well, I wasn't last time I checked. Um, and so I think I want to bring this to a close. We've just been skimming the surface like a stone hops across the water when you skim it. And I pray that your wisdom and your, if you can just apply 1% of what I've said in these last few sessions, if you can apply it in your parish setting or in your prayer group setting, then the Holy Spirit will take over and guide you and lead you and share, we open up the scriptures to you and show you how to build that team in your context, especially if you seek the help of divine renovation, um, Alpha in a Catholic context, but Alpha in a Catholic context, or Alpha UK in general, one of the reasons why it's so good for team building is because they do training sessions, they have the Alpha conference and different things. So it's not just a means of outreach, but it's a means of training your team to multiply. And so that's one I didn't mention before, why Alpha is such a strength to the church. And don't be afraid of working with, oh, I can't work with Protestants or I can't work with Anglicans. Come on guys, you know, we are in desperate times. This COVID-19 thing has not gone away. And even if it had gone away by the time you listen to it, something worse is going to come along. Not only that, we've got an economic crisis on our hands. And so, you know, things are getting very difficult and we need to be at the top of our game which means surrendered servanthood, surrender to Jesus Christ, servanthood to our brothers and sisters, and as the parish moves out, servanthood to our communities. So that's what it's all about. Quoting from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. That's the book of 2 Timothy in the New Testament, chapter 4, verse 5. Here we go. But you, be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So this, you know, um, hang on, let me, oh, Micah, let's go to Micah, the Old Testament, Micah, prophet Micah, minor prophet, because they're a small book, not because he was less. Micah chapter 5 verse 4. And he will arise and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Prophetically speaking of Jesus Christ, whatever Jesus Christ did, we are called to follow him in spirit and in truth, in his footsteps. So we are called to shepherd the flock of God, either in a ordained capacity or in a lay capacity, it makes no difference. In the strength of the Lord, that speaks of being filled inspired by the Holy Spirit, following the Holy Spirit, listening to the Holy Spirit in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And as I listen, I don't know if you can hear it, but the garbage guy is emptying our bins as I speak. And you know something? When we have small teams, it acts almost like the same way that the sacrament of, of reconciliation or confession works, and that is that in a small team setting you can be more transparent and you can share and get rid of the garbage out of your life and have a fresh start. And you know, the worst thing is having a team where everyone's hiding the reality of who they are, they're living with a mask. Yeah, perhaps this is the main thing that. You know, team building really does. It's this challenge, this human challenge we all have of living beyond the mask. That might be a good name for this series, living beyond the mask. Because if we're masking ourselves to each other and putting a false icon or false image of who we are, the chances are we're kidding ourselves with God as well. And if there's one thing that we really see, whether it's in a small team or not in a small team, we need authenticity. We need to follow Jesus in spirit and truth, 
authentically. So I pray that if nothing else from this series, you might have no intention of trying to form a team or being part of a team, but if, if that's you, at least seek authenticity in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because when we are authentic and transparent with the Lord and with ourselves, that begins to seep out and it means that our relationships become more authentic as well. On this note, let's just close with a word of prayer and thanksgiving to the Lord. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. You've granted me the uh, time and the, and the space to, to speak to my brothers and sisters about the glory of being a disciple of Jesus Christ, of being part of a sanctified and committed servant team that is committed to your glory, committed to sharing with each other and the world the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, the liberation that Jesus has called us to. May the walls that divide and separate us come tumbling down. And may your Holy Spirit anoint each one listening, each team member, each leader. May they be blessed and comforted and strengthened by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for our bishops, priests and deacons. And we pray, Lord God, that the natural reservations they may have of allowing too much authority to go to the laity, that you might just uh, grant them wisdom and discernment so they might know who to call, who to talk to, who to, who to delegate certain responsibilities to, how to create, to give them the courage, as you will, Lord, according to your anointing, the courage to put into place teams and draw into leadership those who will take off and carry this gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray, until Jesus comes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget to take your garbage out. The bin man is here. The confessional is open at your local parish. And once the garbage is out of our life, what Jesus is going to do in our hearts and minds and lives is going to just transform us into the image, the growing image of Christ in us, the hope of glory. And that, dear friends, is what it's all about. Christ being glorified in us and through us. Amen.